Osmond Public Library in the children's room. I'm glad you decided to join me for a story time. I'm out on my front porch this time and it is such a beautiful, sunny, wonderful spring day. And guess what my story time's about? The opposite. Rain! <laughs> Remember how much rain we had a couple of days ago? It rained and rained, it even snowed. Well, the weather changes so much here in Montana, and I really do love spring. I think it might be my favorite season, I don't know. But we often get rain in the springtime, and there's a little saying, and it goes, April showers bring May flowers. And so we're getting lots of April showers, which is very good for our gardens and our forests and um, the crops people plant. So we can celebrate the rain, it's a good thing. My first book is called Rabbits and Raindrops. And this is written by Jim Arnsky, and he did the illustrations, the pictures as well. And this is such a sweet little story. Thank you Puffin Books, the man, uh, publisher for allowing me to read it to my friends. And um, I don't know about you, but there's a lot of rabbits in my neighborhood. I go out and see rabbits all over the place, and I wonder what they do when the weather is rainy or snowy or cold. So this book tells us a little bit about that. Here we go, raindrops and rabbits. Mother rabbit sits by her nest under a hedge at the edge of a green lawn. Her five babies are ready to climb out of the nest for their first time. Mother Rabbit hops out of sight into the bright sunlight and onto the green grass. One after another, the five baby rabbits hop out onto the lawn. They nibble clover blossoms and leaves. They meet grasshoppers and spiders and bees. All of a sudden, the sky turns dark and big, heavy raindrops begin to fall. A rabbit's fur is not waterproof. Baby rabbits can become cold when they're soaked from the rain. So Mother Rabbit hurries her babies back under the hedge. A hedge, remember, I should have told you before. It's like a, a big bush, bushes. From their dry shelter, five baby rabbits watch the rain pouring down. A butterfly flutters in under the hedge and rests on a dry leaf. Soon others come inside out of the rain. A hummingbird. Out in the shower, honeybees buzz by, flying between the raindrops to stay dry. Suddenly the shower ends and the last few raindrops splatter down. Looks like that turtle got hit by one. All together, the rabbits hop out onto the lawn to taste the wet grass and play a rabbit tag in the sun. I've got another story for us. This one is a poem. This one is called This Beautiful Day. And it's written by Richard Jackson, illustrated by Susie Lee. And April is National Poetry Month. So I thought I could not forget to read a poem at the last story time of April. And you can see we've got a storm coming in this book this beautiful day. Thank you, Anthem Books, for allowing me to read this to my friends. So there's no words on this first page, but it looks like a boy listening to his radio, or maybe he's listening to a storm forecast from the weather person, and outside it looks like that storm is starting. Here goes our poem. And I think for you, your job is to look at the pictures and see what these kids are up to on a rainy day. Might be some things you could do on our next rainy day. This beautiful day has everyone dancing and spinning 
and swinging around. It has all of us stamping and stomping our feet on the ground. This beautiful day has all of us skipping and singing and calling aloud or whistling and whooping enough for a crowd. This beautiful day, so great for parading, for cartwheeling fun, or hiding and seeking, or gliding and sliding in this marigold sun. High-fiving, and yes, we're aliving. Teeter-tottering, everyone clapping, even toe-tapping, napping at last, and snacking, doodly slurp, doodly burp, doodly do and doodly dee, all together, oh yes, in this perfect weather, on this beautiful day. Oh say, can you say, this beautiful day? That's kind of a fun story. Can you hear that chainsaw going in the background out of my house? I wonder if someone's cutting some wood. I think we'll pause. Oh, I was gonna say we'd pause. Maybe they've stopped. Let's see if we can squeeze in one more book for you. Okay, I had to wait a long time for that chainsaw noise to stop, so I'm back. We're gonna do our next book, Claudette. That's kind of an interesting name for a cloud. Do you see the word, or hear the word cloud in Claudette? Sometimes people will put a E-T-T-E -T -T -E on things. It's French, it's the French language that makes it sound like it's a girl, feminine. All right, so thanks Tom Lichkenheld for allowing us to read your wonderful book and see your beautiful pictures. And thank you to the publisher, Henry Holtz, for letting us read it to my great friends here at Storytime. Here we go. Oh, but before we start, I want you to think about something. In past story times, we've talked a lot about uh, the water cycle and where rain comes from and how it gets cycled up and cycled down. It goes around and around. For those of you who might not have been with us for those story times, I'll quickly show you this picture and that shows what the water cycle is like. So water can be in a lake or a river or the ocean and the sun heats it up and turns it into vapor that you can't see evaporating. Have you ever seen a hot boiling pot of water on a stove and that steam that rises? It's really similar to that. And it rises up and then pretty soon it forms a cloud around a little piece of dust and as that cloud forms it gets heavier and heavier and then pretty soon it can't hold that water anymore and down comes the rain and we have rain if it's warmer weather or snow if it's colder temperature and everything in between so that's where we get water from and another interesting thing water the water that we drink and take a bath in and use for cooking is the same water that was around when the dinosaurs were on earth it's been recycled through the water cycle that many times that just makes me blows my mind okay so cloudette think about that water cycle she's making clouds cloudette was a cloud a very small cloud usually cloudette didn't mind being smaller than the average cloud and you see that little tiny cloud in the picture? That's her, and the big cloud is the average or the normal size. In fact, being small had lots of advantages. Everyone called her cute little names. Hi, Pipsqueak. Hey, Shortcake. Morning, Small Fry. She had lots of little friends. Hey, guys, what's up? Us. <laughs> That's nutty, says that little squirrel. No matter how crowded it was, she could always find a good spot to watch the fireworks. Do you see her littleness right there? She could sneak through tight places. Excuse me. She could hide in small places. I can't find anywhere. Me either. That's what those two birds are saying. 
Tee -hee, says Cloudette. She found a spot. And she even had a special little space that always made her feel cozy at night. But once in a while, all the other clouds would run off to do something big and important. What do you think that might be? A cloud's job that's big and important. You got it, rain. Come on, Cloudette, join our cold front. We're gonna make a huge storm. Yeah, we're gonna go water some crops and maybe find some mighty rivers that flow. No thanks, I'll just watch from here. That's what Cloudette said. Cloudette could see them in the distance doing all sorts of important cloud things. This made her want to do big and important things too. She wanted to make a garden grow. She wanted to make a babbling brook. She wanted to make a waterfall fall. And she thought nothing would be more fun than giving some kids a day off from school. So we went from rain to snow. Do you remember how that happens? When it's colder, the raindrops, instead of being raindrops, they form into snowflakes. One night, Cloudette lay awake wondering what she could do that was big and important. She thought maybe she could work for the fire department. The fireman says, Sorry, we just got a brand new pumper truck. Or maybe they needed some help down at the garden center. Sorry, these plants take tons and tons of water. But nobody seemed to need her. That says the car wash, and guess what the car wash man says? Sorry, it's all done by machines. Don't need the rain. <gasps> Cloudette was feeling blue. That means she was feeling sad. The next day, there was a big storm in Cloudette's neighborhood. The sky got dark, the rain came down like cats and dogs, and the wind blew harder than she had ever seen wind blow before. That's another funny saying in there. It's raining like cats and dogs. Do you see cats and dogs raining down in that picture? No, it just means it's raining really hard. When the storm finally stopped, Cloudette realized she'd been blown far from her neighborhood. She didn't know anyone here. Hi, hi, hello, howdy, how you doing? She's talking to the puffs of smoke from that cabin's fire. They didn't seem eager to get to know her. But pretty soon she was making new friends and seeing things she'd never seen before. Welcome to our neck of the woods, small fry. What a cute little cumulus. Have you seen our new pal? Barely. It's funny. Then she heard something she'd never heard before. What sound does a frog make? That's right, she heard ribbit. She looked down at what was supposed to be a pond, but it was really just a little mud puddle. What happened to your pond, froggy? It dried up and now it's more like a puddle than a pond, said the fish, or excuse me, the frog. This gave Cloudette an idea. She held her breath until she started to puff up all over. Then she turned a nice blue-gray color. She kept growing until it looked like she was ready to burst. She shook her behind until it made a little rumbling sound, not quite what you'd call thunder, but enough to let people know they might want to grab an umbrella. Then she did what she has wanted to do for ages. She let it pour. Look at that big picture. Can you see her? It's really coming down, isn't it? There's the frog. I wonder what's gonna happen to that frog's pond with all that rain. Cloudette rained on that little pond until it grew into a big puddle. And she kept on raining until that big puddle grew into a perfect pond. As soon as she stopped, frogs of every stripe and spot came jumping in the pond. They've been waiting. They all let a big thank you in unison together, Ribbit. Cloudette was exhausted, tired, but happy. Even the higher up clouds were impressed, which got her thinking. Hmm, here's what the clouds said to her. Nice work, Cloudy. Yay, way to water. Prodigious precipitation, Pipsqueak. That was some righteous rain. 
We knew you had it in you. So I remember she was thinking of something big. I'll bet there are other big and important things a little cloud can do. And off she went. I wonder where she's going. The end. Oh, she wanted to go to the waterfall and make water for those fun kids, just like you. Oh, those are fun stories. Well, I hope you know that the library is open now. You can come visit us. Um, let's see, our hours are Tuesday through Friday, 10 to 2. Excuse me, cancel that. Our hours are Tuesday through Friday, 10 to 6, and Saturdays, 10 to 2. We'd love to see you come in. We're not having in-person programming or places to sit and play yet, but someday soon that'll be coming. So you're welcome to come and grab some books and say hi, and we look forward to seeing you. All right, I'll see you next week for story time. Take care. Bye-bye.